Here you go. Very nice. That was loud. <laughs> Okay, so the first one that I remember, I started putting the pieces together. So the first one is when I was a child, I was biking, and I went headfirst over the steering wheels and ended up getting my uh, teeth through my lip. Yes. So I must have fallen on my face. Right, yeah. yeah. Went skiing when I was 11, broke my left ankle going up the hill, mm -hmm. had a sledding accident as a teenager. I, I tripped once, broke my metacarpals on my right foot, and I've fallen on my face a couple times. Um, one was in the ice, on the ice, and another one was in an apartment with a cement floor and I tripped over a rug, and it was another on my face, so hard and mm -hmm. flat that I actually bounced off Jeez. on my face. Start with MRIs. Anybody take any MRIs of your spine? No. And they've. I, I saw one. I know it was a picture when they were looking at your brain, and I was able to see some of your neck on that. But um, has anybody taken X-rays of your spine? Has it been interested? Uh, maybe about. Fifteen a long time years ago, some, ago. Some, it was some quite, extras were taken. Yeah, and then has what's been the let's just say I want to get your idea of what was the goal of the chiropractic care that you've been under. What was what was there? What are they telling you is the purpose or the what are we trying to achieve? Just pain relief or just mostly pain relief is okay. when I've gone. Yes. Has has anybody talked to you about posture in terms of the alignment of the spine or how we change alignment? I'm just trying to get an idea of you've been through a number of chiropractors here. Mm -hmm. What's been, I guess, the kind of treatment that you've been under with these chiropractors? They actually, one at the beginning, I asked for exercises or how do I improve my posture. Right. And I said I wasn't ready for it yet. Okay. I'm not, maybe because I was in too much pain or something. I'm not sure why. Um, a couple other chiropractors gave some little exercises to do. Okay. And uh, doing them, Cause either caused more pain or it was just something was too tight okay. or binding that it was really difficult. I'm just going to go over just a little overview of the spine. When we're dealing with this many injuries and what I usually see happens with the spine, the MRI is what I use to validate and to show the patient how their spine is aging. So your spinal column has 24 vertebrae in it. What we want to see it 50 or 60 years old, you want to have your spine look age appropriate. You understand? It would, it would be, un, be unusual to make it to 50, and part of your spine still looks 18, and part of your spine looks 100, right? Mm -hmm. If you're only utilizing the older parts of your spine, you'll feel like you're in a lot of pain because those, those areas are worn out. Essentially, that when you have an injury to the spine, that injury your body expects to happen again, and so it locks down that area. The job of a chiropractor is to go into your spine and make sure that your whole spine is aging evenly. So when you have the injuries to the extent that I saw, every injury, especially when you were growing, makes you lose parts of the mobility of your spine. So mm -hmm. you started off with, let's say, you know, all 24 vertebrae moving, and then you had a <laughs> face plan or you know, head concussion or head hit, and part of your neck gets injured, and that part of your neck stiffens up. And then your, yeah, they were looking at a lot of pictures of your ribs. I saw on the... That was after the last face plant. So they're looking for rib injuries and, and fractured ribs, let's say. Mm -hmm. But if you have injury to the ribs, you also have injury to the joints in your spine, in your back. Uh -huh. And so when you have injury to the knuckles and joints in your back, your body expects that trauma to happen again, and so it locks up those areas. Now, an area that doesn't move doesn't age. And so we won't see it as, well, the medical world doesn't see it as anything significant, or even the chiropractic world for that matter, when a part of your spine hasn't aged, the medical and chiropractic world calls it unremarkable yeah. on x-ray or MRI, meaning that it's stayed in a time capsule and hasn't aged. It isn't unremarkable that part of your spine hasn't aged. If your skin still had the same appearance as it did when you were 18, you wouldn't say your skin is unremarkable, you'd say it's amazing how mm -hmm. I haven't aged. If your hair or if any part of your body resembled 18-year-old you, you wouldn't say unremarkable. The spine is supposed to be having a curve in it. There's supposed to be an arch in your lumbar called a lordosis. 
And I noticed, I think you said you, you do a lot of work sitting over yes. many years. And when we sit, the lumbar lordosis goes straight. And so all the weight, like a ladder, goes right down to the bottom. That makes sense, it gets transferred down to here. Along with this middle part of the back being stiff, usually from old injuries and ribs protecting the organs in here, this part of our back gets tight, the lower back gets overworked, and then the nerves that leave your lower back go down the leg, right? So you have knee pain, ankle pain, foot pain, hip pain. If I have a nerve pinched in my back, you'll have something called neurological atrophy. The muscles will actually, ah, without trophy nutrition. So they actually will wither and shrink. You know, that's what atrophy is, essentially the degradation of the muscle. And so if the nerve is pin pinched, the muscles will weaken. Not only the muscles, but the ligaments, the bones, <laughs> will all atrophy. And if we want the bones and joints and tissue to be healthy, we have to make sure that the nerves are healthy, right? Because if the nerves are healthy, then your legs are gonna be healthy, your bones are gonna be healthy, your joints are gonna be healthy. The adjustments are used to move mechanical stress, so we mechanically loosen this area so that when you're bending, your spine is bending more in here and not so much in the lower back mm -hmm. or so much in the lower neck. When I, I, the briefly I saw like on, on your neck, on your neck x-ray, the cartilage in your lower neck is thinner than the cartilage in the upper neck. Now, that generally suggests that the cartilage is either bulging or not, you know, if it's not where it's supposed to be, it must be somewhere else meaning he's usually hitting the nerve. And the nerves in your lower neck go to your thyroid, they go down to your arm, they go to your shoulder. And so when you have an overstressed lower neck, you're gonna have thyroid dysfunction or arm dysfunction or shoulder dysfunction. And so how do you help my thyroid? How do you help my shoulder? Let's get the pressure off your lower neck. <laughs> Let's get the pressure off the nerves in your lower neck. There's evidence from what I briefly could see on your x-ray is that this looks 80. You know, part of your neck is older than you are but the good news I want to show you is that the upper neck actually looks 20. That the upper neck has an age. Adjustments don't change posture. If that was told to you, I, I'm sorry. Um, clicking bones, you know, hearing the clap, clicks from the spine. The only way to change posture is the same way that posture was made worse, which is stretching. So the first phase of care is to go through and loosen up all the parts, make sure the whole spine's moving as a team. And then the second phase of care is to bring you back to the right alignment. I don't necessarily treat symptoms. I know our world and what you, you know, I asked earlier about pain relief because a lot of doctors are what I call symptom doctors. We're trying to focus on getting rid of that symptom. What I do is I make the spine healthy. <laughs> do you mm -hmm. understand? The spine houses your, well, your spinal cord, right? And all the nerves that come out of it, which are described in that picture there. <laughs> so everything you feel, for the most part, comes through the spinal cord. And so if you have an inflamed spinal cord, you're gonna have symptoms everywhere. And so, what do you do, Ed? I make the spine happy, and then you're happy. Can you deep breath in for me? Real slow. I got you. Head, head back for me. Let all the air out. All right, deep breath in for me. Head back. Let it go. Deep breath in. Head back. Exhale. All right. Like I said, upper neck is supposed to be your main engine. We named them because these areas are very important. They have a higher level of value. And feel this right here? Feel yes, that? I do. And this area is that area I tried to show you on the x-ray that has brand new cartilage. But because it's all kind of crunchy, <laughs> mm -hmm. stiff up here, this is what allows the lower neck to do triple, quadruple what it's designed to do. The head being forward speeds this up. So when your head goes forward, the upper neck gets stiffer. So we're going to do two things. We're going to loosen up your upper neck and then get your head back. And over time you'll like me. <laughs> it's like my goal is to teach people how to fish. <laughs> right, not just give you a piece of fish to eat. Right? The goal is to teach people how to take care of themselves and our world seems to just want to serve people meals, but we're not teaching people how to care for their own spine, how to, the dentists do it, right? They tell you to brush your own teeth and floss and, right? <laughs> right? We're given instructions on how to, and the, the, the remember how I, and you almost actually said what I was preface, uh, beginning to hint to is that I don't think you should do any stretching, right? Because if you do stretching, which parts of your spine are going to do it? The, the one. The ones that are injured, yeah. right? Because they're the ones that actually move. The parts of your spine that are stiff, when I, if I give you a stretch, the stiff parts aren't going to participate, so therefore stretching hurt me, Ed. I tried to stretch. I tried to do the exercise the chiropractors gave me. They ended up making me worse. 
that makes sense? You shouldn't yes. be doing anything until we have all the parts of your back woken up so that we can safely know that we're not going to just continue to aggravate the parts that are already aggravated. Real gentle. little baby adjustment here. Here we go. Uh -huh. There you go. Nice. Little baby adjustment. <laughs> here we go. Real gentle. I got you. Uh -huh. Relax your head. Uh -huh. It's okay. Relax right here. Breathe. There you go. Very nice. Okay. Give it a second. So you haven't had an adjustment like that for how long? Oh, years. Years, okay. So the, the reason why we need, the goal of that adjustment is to make the spine limber and safe to stretch. It's like a nail. Can you massage a nail into a piece of wood? Maybe, okay. I just don't have the patience to do it, right? The, the adjustment is a tool to speed up this process of getting you to be able to stretch safely. Goal of the care is to get to stretching, but in order to stretch you safely, we have to first make sure the whole spine is working evenly. This is home. Way back here. There you go. All right. You can see right there. This is just a little clogged up here. Oh, there's a bump yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> Who put that in there? There's a bigger mark coming out on the left side. That's why you'll have more symptoms on the right. That's why your right arm was feeling it. You're actually in left, uh, a left avoidance. So you're abusing the right because your left is tight and being avoided. So you're pinching the right side. Mm -hmm. Your head doesn't like tilting left as easily as it tilts to the right. And there's the there's why there's an injury in there on her left upper part of her neck. This mark is larger on the left side. And it's all, and you can feel it. You're like Ed. It's it's, it's a bigger bump. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So there's the, there's one of your there's one of your head injuries. It's not supposed to be three times a week the rest of your life. In a chiropractor, the goal is to teach you how to brush your own teeth, and you know get these areas unclogged, and then you can keep them flowing. That sounds good to yep. me. Okay, <laughs> good. All right, let's pick a side, either side. I'm gonna have you take a deep breath in for me. Exhale for me. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Good. Other side for me. Good. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in for me. Exhale. There we go. There we go. Good. Let's go face down for me. I told you we're gonna run into some monsters. Uh -huh. <laughs> there are there are reasons for why your body changes posture. So with the posture change, and I don't know if this is related, Please. but does that affect energy level as well? Everything, yes, ma'am. No, no. Your your adrenals, for instance. You know, how does how does your brain communicate with your adrenals? Well, your vagus nerve, and also the nerves that come from your middle back. Mm -hmm. So if these, if the communication lines between your brain and your body are disrupted, then or or how about energy with your thyroid? Right, just your thyroid in and of itself, and your th adrenals, your thyroid. You know, these are you know, your hormones that control alertness and energy and metabolism, right? So if you have disruption of those communication lines, then you're going to have organ dysfunction, going to feel lethargic, going to feel weak. Gonna, so this is, where again, where I back up and say your spinal health is your health. Okay. <laughs> this isn't just about headaches or lower back pain. It's about helping bring your spine back to healthiness, which then makes you a healthier person. What is health of the spine? All 24 vertebrae moving <laughs> evenly and the right alignment. Mm -hmm. So the alignment make, ensures and seals that the weight of the spine is evenly spread over all the segments. You feel as old as the average age of your parts of the spine that work. So if you only have the older parts of your spine moving, you'll feel old. And if we can bring online the young parts, you'll feel young. <laughs> So 
So part of the soft tissue work is to get the joints moving better, but it's also to clean out the, the channels along the spine so you don't have the bruising. Does that okay. make sense? The, the soreness. Um, the spine cleans itself through mobility, so when an area becomes frozen, the tissue starts to accumulate lactic acid, which is a nerve irritant, cellular exhaust. So as we get the area moving better, that lactic acid can then be vascularized and driven out of the area, and then you feel better, it's not so sore. Still that lactic acid can explain the achiness? It's at least one point. of the components, yes. Uh -huh. get home, I'd like you if you can soak in, in a tub, you know, with some Epsom salt. Uh -huh. That'd be the best treatment afterwards. A couple cups of salt, you know, minimal water if you can for a little bit, and then fill up the tub. But if you can just get your back in the water, and uh, just osmotically it'll draw out all this soreness. Instead of it having to go into your bloodstream and, you know, peed out, you can just bring it right through your skin. This is, um, you know, like I said, a, at least a you know good portion of why there's so there's pain in here is because of the soft tissue bruising. Now, if we don't get the posture fixed, it just reaccumulates again, right? Uh -huh. It's the alignment, the head being forward, is what keeps this constant mechanical stress on this area. But it can we can get it to feel better, you know, by just getting the, some of the acidity out, and then as long as we're on this journey together of changing the posture, which is the source for why it all accumulates to begin with. what I meant by, you said, what do you mean by excellent? Well, that's what, that's right in that right area there that you're feeling. You gotta get that. Wow. <laughs> right there. Oh, that feels lovely. Yeah, I, uh -huh. I know. There shouldn't be any soreness in this area, same as your middle back. Right there. Wow. And what do you feel from the outside that you can actually pinpoint right. the soreness? Right, so you ever go to like, a, I don't know, malls or different places and you see people getting massaged in chairs? Yeah. Right? Why do they do that? Why don't they lay people down? Right? If people have bad posture, some of your muscles might be tight because you have bad posture. Right? If you're upright and your head's forward, the muscles back here are tense because your head's forward. Uh -huh. why, do you, why are you working on me level, Ed? Because I'm taking gravity out of the equation, right? I'm taking your posture out of the equation, right? Any muscles that are still tight when you're laying down is because of guarding. Oh, okay. Not because of bad posture. Mm -hmm. So what are you feeling, Ed? I'm feeling tight muscles. 
but you're not you're not standing. You're not, there's no weight on your hips right now. Why is it still tight? Right? Okay. Injury. Guarding. Your body is in protective mode. 75% of your leg is one nerve. So that whole area, and I got weakness here. My toes are having problems. Those are all in the same circuit. Um, it's, like it, it's like the breaker in your garage that goes to your kitchen, right? If, if the breaker's hit, not only does the stove not work, but the microwave, the fridge, the dishwasher, <laughs> They're all on the same circuit. Right. Right. Well, no, no, my microwave's not working. Well, check those. I bet you the other things aren't working either. <laughs> They're all on the same power grid. So the nerve supplies the power, right? If you don't have the power, then everything just falls apart. Um, the right hip. The right hip is the one they're picking on. And, well, every day, especially in the morning, uh -huh. every step, it goes clunk, clunk. Mm -hmm. Every time it clunks, it's hurting, or is it doesn't hurt, just clunks? It doesn't hurt with the mm -hmm. clunks, mm -hmm. but periodically it gets sore mm -hmm. at night, sleeping. Mm -hmm. Okay, what the repetitive clunk is, is a tendon rubbing over a bone. Uh -huh. That's all that is. The fact that it's repetitively... The, the muscles are all tight in here. That's what I'm feeling right here. Okay. So when you move your hip around, like guitar strings, the bones are going <laughs> to run over the guitar string cables. And you're going to hear the bone snapping over the tendon, especially that's why it's repetitive. It's not oh. the joint. If it was the joint, it might clunk once, <laughs> you understand, and then it, would, it. it wouldn't keep happening. Um, that has to do with the hip alignment, and we're going to check that in a second. We okay. want to get the hip back into the right position. Going back to what you told me earlier, Ed, I do a lot of sitting. Okay, sitting rotates your hips forward. You're going to have some difficulty opening up the hip, which we're going to show you in a second and give you some stretches to do to open up the hip, bring the hip back in the right position. Okay. So this being upset tightens the glute, which then you notice the guitar strings are plucking the... Oh, <laughs> and then this, okay. is, this is upset because this is tight, because and this is tight because your head's forward. <laughs> do you understand? Yeah. We've got dominoes here. So it to keep it as simple as possible, because <laughs> I'd spend another two more hours explaining all the... <laughs> we got to get your ear over your shoulder. One of the first things I looked at you from the side, your head's two inches forward. Right. That's that's a... I hope I didn't underplay the significance of that. <laughs> Do you understand? That is a significant problem. I'm sorry that other doctors haven't told you it's a significant problem. Um, forward head posture is the well, biggest... I, I told her that. I, I don't have a lot of that doctor. Okay, I'm just saying, <laughs> but that's... Yeah, the doctor. But the fact that the, doc, the doctor is supposed to have the solutions for you. Do you understand? <laughs> right. The husband's supposed to be your lover. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't have a solution. I just made, it's okay. made the Right, but then <laughs> it was their job to look at you, the chiro the, whatever, the doctor is supposed to look at you and go, okay, your head's forward and we have a, here's the plan. Here's the plan. Like if you went to an orthodontist with crooked teeth. Here's the plan for how we're going to straighten these things and get your alignment better. Not just look at it and go, oh yeah, look at that, it's bad. All right, have a nice day. Like, what? <laughs> I think it was a commercial, right? What good is it to tell a person you have a problem if you can't fix it? I think it was a commercial. It's like, oh, your roof's leaking. Oh, oh no, what do I do? I have no idea. <laughs> like, well, thank you for telling me about my problem that you can't fix. <laughs> want to get those knees to the floor. Uh -huh. So you can do it sitting if you want. I mean, if you want to pull that up. Yeah, you want to get your knees down and work on mm -hmm. there not being any tension in the, in the front. You know, that's called the butterfly stretch. Go ahead and tilt your head to the left a little bit for me. Tilt left. There we go. I got you. Go ahead and tilt to the left. Tilt left. There we go. There you go. All right, go ahead and tilt to the right. Tilt right. Ooh. That was loud. <laughs> he heard it over there. I can hear a lot of things inside, but I don't know what it's like out there. <laughs> I got you. Tilt right. Have you press back with your elbow here? Press back, back, back. Here, wait a little bit. Press back into my elbow. Press back. Good. As your neck becomes more soft, it will comply to the mold more, and then it's more effective. And then it also might be more difficult. Ed, this doesn't feel like difficult at all. Correct, because you're not doing it properly. Because <laughs> your neck is still too stiff. You need a couple more sessions of getting loosened up. The upper neck hasn't been adjusted in years. You know, it takes time to 
restore the flexibility. Good, and the knees back up. And then you just move down one inch. So push with your feet. There you go. Now one inch. There you go. And then same thing. We're going knees left. There you go. There you go. And then knees right. We're just pushing on the vertebrae and then rotating it. And then you're going down one inch and you're pushing on the vertebrae and rotating it. We're trying to free up the mobility of your middle back. Right? So the upper neck, the middle upper back need to be woken up. And they're not going to, like I said earlier, enjoy this idea of being worked on, right? Th th they're going to be sore. And the avenue, well, it's like I'm, I'm like a Sherpa on Mount Everest. <laughs> I'm trying to guide you up this mountain. Do you understand? It's difficult. Climbing Mount Everest isn't a piece of cake. Let's sit here for a second. I want to show you. There we go. There we go. Get the idea. I want pressure. Oh, Doesn't wow. it? Now, give me a water bottle wrapped in a towel for now. Do you understand? I want something behind your middle back preventing you from just rounding into a C-shape. Do you uh -huh. understand? Get what, we're, get what we're going here. Is this straight or am I bent back? Well, or is it just in my you mind? You should have a pretty good amount of... I mean, I got you a little bit more bent back than you should be, but we're close. If you look at me for a second, you know, you're, this is where I want to be. Do you understand? Many people, this is where they want to be. Do you understand? This uh -huh. becomes normal posture for people. Right? See how this is flat here? Yeah. Now what? <laughs> this is where I'm, now yes, I'm taking you here so that you'll want to be here because you want to be, make sense? We have right. to overcorrect the opposite way so that you'll be in the middle. <clears throat> and then try to cut back on all the things that are feeding this problem of, hey. you know, Facebook. Correct. Yeah, you got to you got to lock it up. I, 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 <laughs> Watching doctor's videos. When I'm right. I stand up and look at your range of motion again. So just, just really gentle. Just go and turn your head left again. I just want to see. Let's turn your head right. See, compare that to earlier. How's that feel? How's that feel? That feels better. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I don't. I don't feel as much of the pull. Yeah. You got to get your head back. Arm head. Get get your atlas moving better. Mm-hmm. Well, you did great. 